so let's see if we can take this a little bit further and you know come up with where did that number 35 in other words come from right so this average iteration in uh, interval that i have drawn over uh, that i have written over here which is this number 35 is there something you know uh, special about that number right or could i have got a lower iteration interval right? ideally what i would like to have is a, an initiation interval which is as small as possible right? and the question is was there something fundamental about this graph that prevented me from getting an initiation interval smaller than this number 35 okay so in order to understand that the best way to look at it is let's take this iteration period consider a very simple graph right just a to b okay. and let's say that x a and x b are the some arbitrary starting times for a and b right so what do i mean by arbitrary starting times for a and b all that i'm saying is you know for whatever some schedule some set of operations of this graph i'm going to say that a starts at time x a and b starts at time x b okay and the assumption then thereafter is that the next iteration of a is going to start probably at x a plus t right and the second iteration will be x a plus 2 t x a plus 3 t and so on right so in other words i'll have x a x a plus t x a plus 2 t these would be the times for a right and this expression on the other hand what i have written over here xp greater than or equal to xa plus X da this absolutely has to be satisfied right? there's no question about it i need to make sure that the b can start only after a has completed right so da in other words is the execution delay of a okay now this is intuitive and easy to understand the part that is slightly more tricky is what i have drawn below over here right what does it mean to say that i have n tokens or n delays on the edge between a and b right n initial tokens Effectively, what this is saying is that B depends on whatever A did n iterations previously, right? That is to say, n times capital T is the amount of time that uh, previously that the particular A that was that is being used by the current value of D would have executed, okay? So XA plus DA is when the zeroth iteration of A executes. Right? XA plus DA minus ND is when the minus nth iteration of A would execute, would have executed. And the zeroth iteration of B, XB, the time for that must be greater than or equal to XA plus DA minus N times T. Okay. One and this is a slightly tricky thing to understand. The best way to understand it is probably in terms of these kind of Gantt charts, right? So over here, for example, what you can say is that, you know, uh, when I have this edge between C and A, right? There are two initial tokens on uh, that, which basically means that A2, so, if I look at the edge from C to A, there are two initial tokens over here. A2 can execute only after C0, right? Another way of putting it would have been that A0 can only execute after C minus 2 which is pretty much what I have written in the later thing. But it doesn't matter. You can just look at this A2 can execute only after C0, right? I have this C, A, 
2D, right? A2 executes after C0, okay? When does C0 happen? C0 happens at XC and completes at time XC plus DC, okay? When does A2 happen? At XA plus 2 times T. Okay. So what I am basically saying is that XA plus 2 times T must be greater than or equal to XC plus DC. Another way of writing it would be that XA, if I want to write purely in terms of the target node, must be greater than or equal to XC plus DC minus 2 times T. Okay. So that is essentially what is being captured by this equation over here. I could either have you know this minus nt pull it to the left hand side and say xb plus nt that is to say the nth iteration of b must happen after the zeroth iteration of a or I could write that you know the whatever iteration of b must happen after the that minus nth iteration of a that is essentially what I am trying to capture over here. So this is important. If we accept this equation, it straight away sort of implies a lower bound on the value of t. Right? Now, what is t? t is the average iteration interval. It's essentially what we are effectively saying is that t is the average iteration period, right? As I mentioned up here, and effectively what it says is this is the time between successive samples or successive iterations of the system, right? What I would like to see is what is the smallest possible value of t that I can get away with, right? Can I make t arbitrarily small? Can I get it down to zero if possible, right? And if we move forward, right, what we can see is that for an arbitrary graph where there will be several edges of the form u to v, each of them having some n delays, I will have a number of different equations like this xv greater than or equal to xu plus du minus n times t. Right? So for every edge in the graph, this condition must be satisfied. Let's say that this was all that I had in the graph. Right? Then the only condition that needs to be satisfied is that xb must be greater than or equal to xa plus ta that's it right in other words there is no constraint on the value of t okay so t equal to 0 is possible what does that mean it basically means that for this particular graph structure a followed by b right i can execute a0, a1, a2, a3, if I had sufficient amount of hardware, I could run all of them in parallel at one shot. Right? And then basically take it up followed by b. So I would have b0, b1, etc. Right? And the average value of t would tend to 0. Similarly, if I wanted to have something which looks the same but let's say it has a delay element on it now i still need the condition xb must be greater than or equal to xa plus da minus t okay if i rearrange this effectively all that it tells me must be that is that t must be greater than or equal to xa plus da minus xb the point is xa and xb are things that i can choose I can choose any arbitrary starting time for my nodes, which means that once again t greater than or equal to 0 is all that I need over here, right? Anyway, t must be a positive time interval. So t greater than or equal to 0 is still possible. Okay. When is it not possible, right? In order to understand that, let's look at this graph, right? This structure over here. What I'm saying is, I have now got a graph where I'm showing you only a part of the graph. There is a set of nodes that are forming a circle, right? Or a cycle in the graph, right? So there is an edge from U0 to U1, 
and this should be x1. So if I look at this, this x1 corresponds to this, x0 corresponds to u0, right? So x0 plus d0 is the time when the first iteration of u0 completes. Because there were n0 delays on that edge, the minus n0t also needs to be present over there, right? So x1 must be greater than or equal to x0 plus d0 minus n0t. Similarly, for this, I write down x0, x1 plus d1 as before minus n1 times t. Once again, the same set of equations, right? Similarly, I can write something for this x3, right? Similarly, for x4. And finally, what I have over here is this last equation corresponds to this particular edge, right? Because what I have is this x0 corresponds once again to u0, but the x4 over here corresponds to u4, the execution time of d4, and the number of edges in a number of delay elements or initial tokens n4 over here. What happens when I add all of this together? Right. What I find is that the left hand side will add up. I'll basically get x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x0 must be greater than or equal to. Once again, the same thing gets added up over here so that I get x0 plus x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. The d's add up to give d0 plus d1 plus d2 plus d3 plus d4 and this minus t times n0 plus n1 plus n2 plus n3 plus n4 will, will come over here, right? which is essentially what I've got as the last statement over here, summation of di minus t times summation of ni, rearrange the expression and I end up with this equation out here t greater than or equal to summation of di by summation of ni. Okay. Effectively, the way to think about it is this is now defined something called an iteration period bound. Okay. What it's telling me is that if I have a graph that looks like this, a, b, and d, right? Now, in this case, effectively, what it's saying is that xb must be greater than or equal to xa plus da, but xa must be greater than or equal to xb plus db minus t. Okay, add, cancel out, etc. I'll end up with the expression t greater than or equal to da plus db. This is a lower bound on the iteration period. Right? Fundamentally, it is telling you that the moment you have feedback of this form right, in a data flow graph, there is a lower limit on how or on the interval that is required in order to complete an iteration right? or in order to run successive iterations. Right? What is that interval? If we go further over here, basically, you know, I could also take a Supposing I had two tokens over here, then effectively what I'll have is xa or xb must be greater than or equal to xa plus da and xa must be greater than or equal to xb plus db minus 2t, which basically tells me that t must be greater than or equal to da plus db by 2. Okay, this is interesting. What is it telling me? It's telling me that if I had two tokens over here in this entire cycle, right? Effectively, there is still some scope that I could run things in parallel and get an average iteration interval which was smaller than the number that I started with. Okay. Where does that leave me as far as the original graph that I considered to start this thing off, right? The ABC, it had one delay over here, two delays over here, 40. 20 and 10. These are the execution times of the individual nodes, right? If I look at it, what this graph is telling me is this particular cycle, right? I need to have 
xc greater than or equal to xb plus db xb greater than or equal to xc plus dc minus d effectively d greater than or equal to db plus dc but the other cycle right if i look at it i'll have three expressions over there right i'll have xa greater than or equal to something i'll have xb greater than or equal to something and xc greater than or equal to something and i combine all of these together what i will end up with is t greater than or equal to da plus db plus dc by 2 okay so now i have two separate expressions this one db plus dc is 20 plus 10 equal to 30 and this one is basically saying 40 plus 20 plus 10 by 2 equal to 35 okay so in other words what i end up with is t must be greater than or equal to 30 and 35 which basically means t must be greater than or equal to 35 it has to be greater than the maximum among the different possibilities that you have okay so this quantity that we can compute in this way right is something called the iteration period bound of a system right effectively what we are trying to do is we what we need to do in other words in order to find the iteration period bound is to go through all the possible cycles that are present in the system find out what each one of them implies in terms of the bound that is possible for the iteration period and from those basically compute which is the maximum value which basically tells us this that maximum value will give you the lower bound on the iteration period the important point to understand is what does it actually mean physically so something of this sort right a pure feed forward network effectively what we are saying is that t can be as low as zero there is no lower bound on the iteration period all that that is saying is if my entire system is purely feed forward if I have sufficient hardware, right, that's a big if, but if I have sufficient hardware, there is no lower limit on how quickly I can process samples. Okay. On the other hand, if I have something like this, where there are cycles present in it, right, then no matter how much hardware I have, I will not be able to exploit that parallelism because there are some data dependencies which are going to limit me to this iteration period. Now, there is something very important that you need to understand. Does this mean that fundamentally I cannot get any better than this t equal to 35 over here? No. What it means is that subject to the constraints on your hardware, that is to say as long as your hardware is such that A will take 40 units of time, B will take 20 units of time and so on, yes, this is a tight constraint. Any amount of you know applying parallelism, doing some kind of pipelining, or just sort of trying to move the registers around and trying to reduce the critical path will not help you. What you will have to do is to look at something fundamental which will change the kind of hardware that you are using. Maybe use something that will allow you to run A by itself faster than 40 time units. Okay. So the key takeaway from this. As long as a data flow graph has cycles in it, that will impose some kind of lower limit on the iteration period that we can end up with for the system. Okay. That iteration period cannot be sort of defeated or undercut by any amount of the normal transformations and modifications that we apply to a graph. As we'll be seeing in the next class, we'll be looking at you know the pipelining and parallelism as some examples of transformations. Those in particular cannot be used in order to improve the behavior of the system beyond the point. Right? On the other hand, by actually making fundamental changes to the kind of hardware that you are going to use in the system, you can get around this problem. But that basically means that you know you are now looking at new hardware. 